So if you clicked onto this video, you are probably studying for the SAT right now and you want to raise your SAT score quickly. So what I'm about to talk about in this video, it might contradict exactly how you've been studying for the SAT. And that might hurt your feelings a little bit. You know, it might make you look stupid a little bit. But, you know, if I were in your shoes and if I'm studying for the SAT right now, I'd rather get punched in the face and do it the right way than to just sit in those fuzzy, comfortable lies and never see my score go up. And don't worry, you're not going to have to work with those expensive Ivy League educated tutors to find out the secret sauce behind raising your SAT score. Well, some people do, but you're not going to have to. See, the problem here is that you were studying for the SAT the first time in your life. Like you have never studied for the SAT before and you just don't know what to do. So I'm going to teach you how to do it the right way. And if you're wondering who is this stranger talking about SAT, how to study for the SAT? Well, I'm just a SAT tutor who got a perfect score on the math section in high school. And after high school, throughout university, and after graduating from university, I've been working with high school students to raise their SAT math score anywhere from 450 to 750 plus consistently. So I think I might have a decent track record to give you an advice or two on how to study for the SAT. And before we get started, guys, make sure you go down, like right down there, and smash the like button, and let's get straight into this video. So when people are studying for the SAT, they think it's like this. They think it's about 80% solving, you know, those doing those practice exams and 20% reviewing. And that's on a good day. Most people, they don't even review. But the correct way to study for the SAT is actually 80% reviewing and 20% solving. If you start spending most of your time reviewing the wrong questions rather than constantly solving exams over exams over exams, then you're going to do a lot better. So this is going to be one of the main takeaways. But you might be wondering, am I supposed to look over the wrong questions? What am I supposed to do with them? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly review the wrong questions. So on Reddit, somebody posted this question, uh, Jack Simic, I'm just gonna call you Jamie. So Jamie posted this question. So what we see here is that Jamie is doing some corrections notes, right? She's doing some corrections notes and she's trying to understand what she did wrong. She's trying to figure out why she got this question wrong and where it went wrong. And it's great that she is reviewing her work and trying to understand her mistakes because this exact same type of question will show up in the SAT again, because all SAT is, is just repetition of same questions with just different words and different numbers. So if you got this question wrong and just move on, then you're going to see it again and you're going to miss it again. And your score will just never go up. And we got about two people trying to help Jamie out. First one's going to be John Dixon Harris. And we got the amazing lion here. And these two people are going to exemplify exactly what you should do and what you shouldn't do when you are reviewing your questions. So let's go over what each person did. So John D. Harris says, okay, what you do is you add exponents, you don't multiply them. And it shows you the work right there. And Jamie sees them be like, oh, that's how you solve the question. Thank you so much. But let's go to the amazing lion. What does the amazing lion do? Well, amazing lion starts off with because when you are multiplying, you add the exponents together. This is known as the exponent rule. So when you have all this stuff, you add the exponents, you get that, which is x squared. And the final answer is going to be 15 x squared. I hope that makes sense. And just by looking at the number of O's in her O, you can tell that Jamie was impressed. So exactly what is the difference here? Because they both essentially did the same thing. They explained how to solve the question, right? But here's what Amazing Lion did differently. Amazing Lion actually said, because when you are multiplying, you add the exponents together, this is known as the exponent rule. See, what the Amazing Lion here did is that he explained the concept behind it, right? He explained why, right? Because John D. Harris just said, oh, you just add the exponents, you don't multiply them. But he never explained why you add them and you don't multiply them. But Amazing Lion actually showed you the why behind it, why you are supposed to add exponents together. You add them because you're multiplying and you add the exponents together. So what difference does that actually make? Well, here's the thing. See, with John D. Harris's explanation, Jamie just looks at it and she's like, oh, you're supposed to add the exponents here. But Jamie never understands why. And the problem with that is, see, with this explanation right here, Jamie can solve this question. But the problem is this exact question will never show up on the SAT ever again. You just see it here and that's it. See, the problem is that what SAT will do is they will hit you with a different exponent question. And in this question, are you supposed to add the exponents or are you supposed to multiply the exponents, right? 
Jamie is going to be confused again whether she's supposed to add them or she has to multiply them because she never understood why you're supposed to add them. John D. Harris just said you're supposed to add the exponents and not multiply the exponents. But Jamie never understood why that's the case. So when she sees another exponent question, she'll be confused again. Like, am I supposed to add the exponents here, multiply them, or subtract them? But with amazing lines explanation right here, by understanding the concept that is behind this question, she now understands why she has to add them. So when she sees a similar exponent related question, she's going to know that she has to add the exponents. So with this explanation, you're essentially guessing. You're hoping that you're doing the right way. But with this explanation, you're confident. You know exactly why you have to add them and you're, you know you're going to get the answer right. And that small piece makes all the difference. When you're reviewing the questions, you have to review the underlying concept and understand why things are working this certain way. If you just memorize, flat out memorize how to solve that question, you can only solve this specific question. And this question will never show up on the SAT again. In order for you to be able to solve these different types of exponent or triangle or any kind of SAT math questions, you have to, most importantly, understand the concept behind them. Because if you understand why things are working a certain way, why you have to add the exponents, why you have to multiply the exponents, then no matter what kind of exponent question they throw at you, you're going to know exactly what to do. You're not guessing anymore. And if you're constantly guessing on the SAT, then you're essentially gambling with your SAT score and you're not guaranteed to be lucky on the exam day. If you're solely relying on guessing, your score is going to fluctuate a lot. But if you understand the concept behind it and become confident, then your score is going to be consistent. And that's exactly what you want on the exam day. And this is another secret, but this is exactly what I do when I'm tutoring and in my online program. See, when you're studying for the SAT or trying to review your wrong questions, you have to focus on understanding why you got that question wrong and not memorize the steps to solve those questions. Because if you memorize how to solve this question, you will be able to solve this question and get it right. But the problem is, this exact question will never show up in the SAT again. And when you're given another variation of this exponent related question, you're not gonna know how to solve it because you just flat out memorized how to solve this question. You never understood why things worked a certain way. But if you understand why you did what you did, then you'll be able to solve any of these questions no matter what SAT throws at you. So long story short, when you're studying for the SAT or reviewing your wrong questions, make sure you focus on understanding. Focus on understanding the underlying concept behind every single question. And if you can do that, your SAT score will go up a lot quicker than you can even imagine. So I'll end you with a quick summary of the video. The mistake that a lot of students make when they are studying for the SAT is that they focus on memorizing how to solve the question, but you actually need to focus on understanding the underlying concept. Otherwise, you'll continue to miss these variations of the same type of question because you only memorized how to solve this specific question. When things change, you're not going to know how to solve them. If you focus on memorizing, you'll be able to only solve this question. If you focus on understanding, you'll be able to solve every single question, no matter what kind of question SAT throws at you. So that's going to be it, guys. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you drop a like button. And if you would like to see more of these kind of helpful videos for the SAT prep, then consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be dropping them every single week so that you can raise your SAT math score faster than I did and maximize your potential. That's what this channel is all about. So that's going to be it. I'll see you guys on the next video.